All right, here are some quick steps to get you from nothing to making a game as fast as possible, even if you work a full-time job like me. I'm a teacher, and I started here with this Pico 8 game. I remade it four times, and now I have this, which is a demo you can check out. Links in the description. There's a little bit of credibility to prove I know what I'm talking about. Now, I got from here to here in just about two years. That might sound like a long time to you, but I got from here to here in a week with minimal tutorial. Learning game dev can be fast and fun if you do it the right way. And that's what I'm gonna try to teach you today. Step one, start with Pico 8. I know Godot is in the thumbnail and we'll get to Godot, but I highly suggest starting with Pico 8. Here's why. Game development is hard. The learning curve is very high, and because of this, it's very easy to get discouraged and quit. I quit a few times when I first started in Unity because there was so much to learn and it felt impossible without having any programming background. In order to stick with game dev, you need to actually make things you can play while you're making them. This feedback loop will keep you encouraged to keep learning so that you feel excited to add more things to your game. If you get caught up in tutorial purgatory and never have any freedom to actually play with what you make and feel like you understand it, you'll become discouraged very quickly. I love Godot and respect Unity's capacity for power, but making games in these engines compared to something like Pico 8 take a lot more knowledge and skill than a beginner has. To make something that's actually interesting in one of these engines, it takes a while and actually understanding what you're making and not just repeating what you look at in tutorials takes even longer. In Unity and Godot, it takes me 10 to 30 minutes to get a character moving. As a beginner, you can expect to triple that time. In Pico 8, however, done. I did it while typing the script. It's instant. Whatever you think of, you can make very quickly. You want this guy to have a hat? Done, easy. Pico 8 is fast, all the tools are built right into the engine, and there's a free version you can use called Pico 8 Education Edition. And it actually limits your scope. Whoa, what the heck does that mean? Well, most beginning devs think they have a small idea, but it's usually way more than they can make. And so they bite off more than they can chew, and then they quit and die. But Pico 8 limits it all for you. There's only 16 colors, 128 by 128 pixels of resolution, and 8,192 tokens. That's the amount of characters that you're allowed to type. Limitations can seem scary, but they actually make it so that you get more creative. All right, let's stop for just a second and take a look at some of this insane Pico 8 work with the same limitations I've just shown you. You can't make every single idea in Pico 8, but it'll give you a really great base knowledge to work on a bigger game, and you'll still be able to make something cool that you can share with your friends, or easily put on any of those retro emulation handhelds you might have sitting around, or on pretty much anything. Pico 8 plays on whatever. Easy to share, easy to make stuff in, great to start out in. Go start with Pico 8. Step two. Make tiny things. When I first started out and devs told me to limit my scope, I always hated this and I thought it meant that I had to make less fun games. Now I look at it like a challenge. How can I make the most fun game with the least work possible? This is a mindset shift for a lot of people that wanna make games because they've got a cool idea in their head for something they wanna make and Pico 8 forces you to make these little bite-sized experiences. Here, look. This is my first game in Pico 8. It's a crushing animation that makes a number go up. 
This took me about an hour to figure out how to do, but by then I had learned how to make an animation play and how to make something trigger an animation to play. These are two massive building blocks in game design and any game engine. I did look at a couple of small tutorials about animation and, and Google a couple of things, but overall, I only looked at the things that I needed to know and I just tried to make a simple thing by myself. Similarly in Godot, here's my first quote unquote game thing. It's just this guy running from one side of the screen to the other. Similarly, I just messed around and clicked on things, read some of the manual, looked up a few short tutorials, uh, and didn't try to follow something like paint by number. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but when you're trying to learn a game engine, you need to get in there and actually make stuff. Now, obviously, you can't make a full game, but if you look at these small projects and don't follow a tutorial, you'll learn really fast. After you've made a few of these little game things, you'll be ready to put them together into a full game. Here's that game from earlier I showed you at the beginning of this video. This is my first Pico 8 game, and after I made a couple of those weird animation number go up crusher things, I sat down and used that knowledge to turn it into a full game. Pretty much everything I learned making this thing crush itself was everything that I used to build the rest of this game. And I think that's kind of the paradox with game design. There's a massive learning curve right at the beginning when you're just learning to do a couple of simple things. But once you've learned how to do something really simple, like this little crushing animation, you can turn it into a whole game. I learned how to render graphics on screen, and so then I was able to make this whole menu system. I learned how to make a player have an input to start the animation, and so then I was able to make this menu where you press a button and something happens. Yeah, that's just what I mean. You gotta make these little things and it'll push you forward into making games that are actually full-sized and awesome. Part three, move engines. Once you've made something at least as complex as this, my first Pico 8 game, you can either keep learning Pico 8 or jump to something like Godot. Maybe if you're feeling like it, you could take a pit stop in RPG Maker or Game Maker or whatever other smaller game engine you'd like to. It doesn't really matter. The steps will work for anything, but I like Godot. I would steer you away from Unity and Unreal. As indie devs, we make smaller games. We don't need insane tools to make small games. Knowing this, choose the toolkit that will best serve your goal. Godot and all these smaller engines are built for indie devs making smaller projects. And this smaller toolkit does kind of what Pico 8 does by limiting your scale and keeping things manageable. Unity and Unreal are commercial enterprise ready, but I'm guessing that you aren't a commercial enterprise, not yet at least. Building an indie game with these engines is like trying to build a snowman with a backhoe. And while it's definitely possible, I'd rather just use the snow shovel. Part four, make your game. Now that you have your feet wet, you wanna make your game. I suggest a soft run to get your feet wet in a new engine, if you've just switched engines. Um, usually, if you're gonna do a soft run, I would actually recommend a tutorial. But not following the whole thing, just maybe following parts of it just to get familiar with some of the features of the engine. Once you've found your building blocks and you know enough to make what you want to make, start making it. Then make it a prototype or a demo, something that will take a week or so. Make small things and slowly build your skills. This is what I've been saying the whole time, but you're just going to make slightly bigger small things and continue to do this until you can actually make the project that you want to make. No one wants to make small things, but the key is to make small things that are actually fun. Like this. I made this in a week. It's a game about unaliving everyone in the world with a guillotine. It's simple, but I polished it and added a Windows theme to learn about the theme manager in Godot. And when I was done, I had a game. I could play it. And who knows, maybe one day I'll come back and turn it into a full release. But regardless, this was the same type of thing that I was doing in Pico 8, but now I made something slightly bigger. 
and my next project, which looked like this, was even bigger. And my next project, well, that's now the demo that you can play in the description. And as you can see, it's turning into something that looks kind of professional. So it's all about incremental progress and just learning small things and continuing to smash them together until you've got exactly what you'd like. That's about all I know. Make it fun, make small things, and use tutorials only to learn about engine features. Also, I guess, make things that you like playing. You do all this, in a year or two, you'll be sitting exactly where I am with a cool piece like this, looking at a Steam release. Thanks again for stopping by. Please check out those links in the description. And if you like hearing my voice, I've got two podcasts. One about books. Hey, I know people don't like reading, but I'm an English teacher. So go listen to the book podcast. And the other one is about video games. So click through to those. It's just audio for now. But if I keep getting followers, I will definitely start uploading it on YouTube. Once again, thanks again for clicking. Thanks for listening. Thanks for following. You guys rule. Peace out.